Yeah, we have a little bit of a wound training simulator here. Yeah. All right, and we're gonna put on my arm. On the right, that's right. Yeah. We're gonna go over the three basic essential things to do. Okay. Uh, the very first thing is when you find or see severe bleeding, is to obviously locate it. And the first thing we tell people to do is to use the bleeding, cool, bleeding control tools you have with you at all time, and that's these, to use your hands. Mm -hmm. And to get your hands right on that bleeding vessel and to hold pressure. Yeah, yep. Come on, hold Jay, pressure. Gary, Gary, you should go in here, Gary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Gary, you're going to have to do some bleeding control. That's right, Gary. That's right. Okay. So there's a hole. There's a hole. So we're going to, we find that hole. We know it's bleeding severely. Help is, 911 has been activated. Help is on the way. What can we do in the meantime? We're going to hold pressure. We're going to hold pressure between that hole and the heart. So if the heart is up here, we're going to hold pressure just north of it, okay? Just closer to try to shut off that bleeding vessel. So we're going to hold pressure. We're then going to send someone to go get one of the bleeding control kits, and we happen to have one right here. So as we're holding, hold the please, sir, I please go right ahead, okay? Yeah. Right, with the heel of your hand right down there, just like that, hold pressure nice and tight. Okay, great. All right, we now have one of our training kits, but we're going to open up for the purposes of the demonstration here, okay? And we have... We have some just-in-time instructions, which we encourage our people, to, our users, to have out there so they can see what to do, and they're holding pressure. We now are going to open up our kit, and we have some gauze here. This gauze has a hemostatic property to it that will help make a clot form faster. We're going to open that gauze up. We're going to try to open that gauze up. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that gauze, and we're going to start packing it into the wound. And we're looking for where the bleeding is coming from, and we're packing it in there. So, go ahead, sir, and just pack it on in there. Oh, you'll keep yep. going. Keep going. It, it can all go. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Absolutely. Keep going. Okay? okay. And we're going to pack that, and we're going to hold, pack and hold pressure, and pack and hold pressure. Okay. Okay. And we're going to keep going until it's full, and once it's all full in there, mm -hmm. we're then going to put the rest on top and continue to hold pressure, because it doesn't work by itself. And this is all about maintaining pressure. And if the pressure that we can maintain is greater than the pressure of the blood coming out, we're going to shut off the leaking, the leaking vessel, if you will. And that's what we're going to do. We can then wrap that area with the other piece of equipment that's in here, which is a pressure dressing, which we're going to wrap it around just like an ace wrap, nice and tight, while we maintain our pressure. And we're then going to, there's a little Velcro adhesive to it, hold it in place, and we're going to hold more pressure on top. And by now you get the theme. Press and hold, press and hold, pack and hold, press and hold. Yeah. But sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes despite that, you need to do something else. And that's where tourniquets come into place. And tourniquets serve a role in that they will actually provide circumferential compression of the bleeding vessel and to allow it. So for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to pretend that the area closer to the patient's heart is here. So we're going to go above the level of the injury, right? Because we want to shut off that bleeding vessel. And so we have to go above the level of the injury, closer to the heart or more central to the body. So we can slide it over top here, or we can just feed it, we'll feed it on over around like this. So we'll feed it around, sir. And if you wouldn't mind, feed that loop through there, um, right through the bottom there, just uh, come up like that. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And pull nice and tight. This is the most important step is pulling that as tight as possible. And this hurts. This is not a fun thing for the patient to go through. And we have to make sure they know that this is going to hurt. So we wrap that and now we're going to start spinning. So go ahead and keep spinning that. And we're spinning that windlass strap or that, we're spinning that rod if you will. Keep going. Okay. And one more good spin. Okay. Okay. Great. Yep. All right. Excellent. And now that is sufficient to control the severe bleeding. And so that is our stepwise approach to how to control hemorrhage. It's, as a reminder, we have the just-in-time instructions that um, myself and my colleagues at the Joint Committee to Enhance Survival from this kind of thing have put together. And these instructions are available both on our website with every AED, and we have a larger poster of it here. And, sorry, Chief. And, um, and so that's how we control severe bleeding. These are what the kits look like that you'll see around the county. They're pretty obviously marked and stuff like that. Uh, and we also have a smaller version of the kit that may make its way out to, to more individual locations as well. Um, lastly, yes. yes, lastly, working with our partners in the police department and our tiered and layered levels of response that we want to have to this, um, our police colleagues who fully embrace this, um, and, and Chief, thank you for, for being such a supporter and a believer in this as well because this has been huge. Uh, we are going to be placing these larger kits 
which have the same elemental tools in them in our police supervisor vehicles around the county so that uh, should there be multiple casualties, there's extra resources involved. What we don't want to have happen is we don't want to have a situation where we don't have enough resources to help people. So between having the kits located in certain locations, having them uh, on the persons of our police officers and our fire per rescue personnel and in their apparatus and their vehicles, and having uh, quick surge capacity capability, we believe that multi-layered approach will, will save lives.